veterans, my name is Connie Largent and I'm the principal here at Stonegate Elementary. On behalf of all of us, we would like to extend to you our sincerest gratitude for your courage and your bravery and all that you have done to protect our freedoms. We are looking forward to a time when we can once again be together in person for Veterans Day presentations. Until then, we hope that you will enjoy the video that we have created in your honor. It is so important to us that all of our students continue to learn and recognize the value and the importance of Veterans and Veterans Day. So once again, veterans, we humbly thank you for everything that you have done. And we are so appreciative that we can live in the land of the free because of the brave.
Hi, third grade team are, wanted to share some things that our students uh, thought of, words that describe veterans. So we're just gonna kind of read those off and some things that the kids thought those words meant. So first, I start patriotic. They thought that means that you love and sor serve our country. Freedom, fight for us and our country and other countries. Brave. They're willing to sacrifice for our democracy. Service, they promise to spend time protecting us. You're loyal, you keep a promise. Strong, you're strong in body and in mind. Smart, they have to be able to plan. Willing, we'll fight for our way of life. Thank you for serving our country, risking your safety and your life. It was just a little white table, but it brought tears of pride to my Uncle John's eyes. The Veterans Day, he came for dinner and stood by it, except for one person, even though no one would be eating at it. It was just a little white table, but earlier that day, Mama had told Gretchen, Samantha, and me the little table we were setting for Veterans Day was just like the ones that stood across America in the dining halls of the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and Air Force since the Vietnam War had ended. The tables honor the men and women who serve in America's armed forces, especially those missing in action, our MIAs, and those who held prisoner of war, our POWs. It was just a little white table, but it felt as big as America when we helped Mama put each item on it and she told us why it was so important. We use a small table girl, she explained at first, to show one soldier's lonely battle against many. We cover it with a white cloth to honor a soldier's pure heart when he answers his country's call to duty. We place a lemon slice and grains of salt on a plate to show a captive soldier's bitter fate and tears of families waiting for loved ones to return, she continued. We push an empty chair to the table for the missing soldiers who are not here. We lay a black napkin for the sorrow of captivity and turn over 
a glass for the meal that won't be eaten, she said. We place a white candle for peace, and finally a red rose in a vase tied with a red ribbon for the hope that all of our missing will return someday. Mama finished speaking as the sunlight spilled onto the table and filled the overturned glass. It was just a little white table, but it suddenly made me want to burst with a feeling that I couldn't explain. When Mama told us how much her setting the white table would mean to Uncle John that night, then she told us something we didn't know. Our Uncle John, who gave us big bear hugs and spun us with airplane twirls and called me his Katie girl was a POW in Vietnam before we were born. It was just a little white table, but it gave us the courage to ask Mama what had happened to Uncle John in Vietnam. She quietly told us his story. When Uncle John served in Vietnam, he was sent on a rescue mission, and his helicopter was shot down behind enemy lines, she began and he and his three crew members were taken prisoner. One crew member named Mike had serious wounds from the crash, but Uncle John and the other men tried to help Mike get better and persuaded a guard to bring Mike medicine. Then one day when a guard looked away, Uncle John and the others had a chance to escape, but Mike was still too sick to go. So Uncle John stayed behind because he would never leave a fellow soldier alone so far from home. But how did Uncle John get free? We asked Mama. Sometime later, Uncle John had the chance to escape again. And somehow he was able to take Mike with him, carrying him on his back and collecting just enough rainwater and big leaves to keep them alive until Uncle John found an American infantry unit to help them. But even though Uncle John did everything he could to bring Mike home alive, Mike's wounds were just too serious, and he died before the rescue helicopter landed. I know Mike was only 20 years old and he dreamed of playing football, but he loved America enough to give his life for his country when duty called. And I know how much Uncle John loves America, too. But he learned when helping Mike that a soldier risks his life for a fellow soldier because the best of your country lives in every man and woman who would lay down their life for you too. It was just a little white table, but it needed words of gratitude, like Mama's Thanksgiving meal. So before Uncle John arrived for dinner, Gretchen and Samantha and I decided to put three gifts of our own on the table to honor our veterans. Gretchen colored pictures of all the objects on the table, and Samantha wrote out the words of My Country, Tis of Thee, as a tribute in song. But I didn't know what I, a ten-year-old girl, could ever put on the table that was as important as each veteran's gift of freedom to me. It was just a little white table, but I looked at it all dinner long. And in the quiet inside me, I could almost hear the silent soldiers of the empty chair saying, Remember us, please. We are real people like your Uncle John and Mike, who left families and friends, homes and dreams of our own, to protect your birthright of liberty from disappearing as easily as sunlight from a glass. It was just a little white table. But it took my words away when I hugged Uncle John goodnight and wanted to thank him for serving our country so bravely. So I just hugged him even harder and told him I loved him. Uncle John hugged me back even harder than I had hugged him. And that's when I knew what I could put on the table. My promise to put the words from my heart into a little book about America's white table. And in the book, I'd use Gretchen's pictures and Samantha's song and Mama's story about Uncle John and his friend Mike. Because I hoped that everyone who read it would set a white table on Veterans Day, too. So the brave Americans, the little table honors, won't ever feel forgotten by the country they loved so much. Then in the salt on the little white table, I traced in the grains of their family's tears what each man and woman who serves America is to me, a hero. And that's when I saw the tears of pride fill my Uncle John's eyes. 